All right, folks, welcome back. This is part two of the ADAS curve. And now we can draw the graph and plot both AD and AS curves on the graph. So again, here we have on the x-axis our real GDP, our GDP. We could put, if you want to, at the very bottom, unemployment. And again, both are inversely related. On the x-axis, we can put inflation, which is the price level of an economy. And let's just use numbers on the x-axis, $19.1 trillion and 1.9% level of inflation on the y-axis. And now once we have our point A, our equilibrium point, we can now draw our AD and AS curves. I'm going to use a blue pen to represent the AD curve. And we know that it is a downward sloping curve that looks like that. We can label this curve as AD. And AD, again, is a function of GDP, where GDP consists of you and me, consumers, government spending, investment spending, and net exports. <clears throat> so now we can see that each component of GDP can either positively or negatively affect the AD shifting to the right or to the left. But before we move, we move on, we want to see why the AD curve is a downward sloping curve. And I want you to take note at the y-axis. Price level. When price level decreases, we see, let's say, deflation. Chances are consumers are going to consume more. So consumer spending, consumer spending will increase. And this explains why the AD curve is downward sloping. As price level decreases, consumer spending increases. Now, we want to now focus on the AS curve. And to be more precise, we're going to focus on the short run AS curve, which looks something like this. SRAS, which stands for the short run AS for the aggregate supply curve. And notice how the curve is a lot more curvy than what we have a linear graph of the AD. And so we can kind of tell that the SRAS looks a lot different based upon the curvature uh, versus the straight curve that we have with AD. And we have to kind of ask the question, why do we see an upward sloping SRAS curve as, as opposed to the downward AD curve? For the SRAS curve, let's look, now focus on the x-axis. So think about the concept of SRAS, that of, let's say, capital. Capital is a scarce resource. And as one firm is going to compete with other firms in attaining capital, it does put pressure on the value of the capital to increase. And when the value of the capital increases, so does the price, in this case of borrowing capital. And the same thing can be said about other types of supply variables, such as land. Land is also a scarce resource. And when more and more firms and governments compete for land, limited land, the value of land increases. Therefore, the price of land also increases. And this is why we have an upward sloping SRAS curve. Now I want to show you, when focusing on the SRAS curve, that there are two distinct economic schools of thought that are represented in both the SRAS curve. The first school of thought is called the Keynesian School of Economics. And that can be found at zero 
up to point A. We can call this the Keynesian School of Economics. Uh, John Maynard Keynes, a British economist who wrote a lot of books, uh, one that looked at ways to uh, enhance government inter intervention, which really kind of uh, was the architect of the Great Depression back in the 1930s, uh, of the need to increase government spending. And the other school of thought we can see is called the Classical School of Economics, which is from point A all the way up to the top of the SRAS curve. Classical economics, which really comes down to theorists such as Adam Smith and David Ricardo, uh, and kind of more with today's timeline, uh, Milton Friedman. So now we see two schools of economic thought. Uh, both are on the SRAS graph. And we'll explain as to why both are on the uh, SRAS graph. Okay, in a nutshell, if you are a believer of the Keynesian economics, Keynesian economics, Keynesian school of economics, you are a believer of the power of AD, the aggregate demand curve, uh, mainly under the government spending and even under monetary policy. So to really see what they are going to uh, predict when it comes to increased government spending, we have to draw once again our AD AS curve. So again, here we have on the x-axis real GDP, zero, and we have the inflation rate price level on the y-axis. We're using $19.1 trillion on the x-axis, 1.9% inflation, and here we have our point A, point A, our equilibrium point. So if you remember, we talked about the AD curve and why it is downward sloping as such. AD, here is our GDP, and I'm gonna focus on government, government spending. And for many Keynesian economists, they believe that the AS curve is actually a 45 degree angle, not so much a steep SRAS curve as we saw with the initial graph. So this is what they are arguing, if you are a Keynesian economist, in times of crises, one of the best ways to get out of a rut is through government intervention. And one example of that is something called fiscal policy. Now we know in the United States that the Congress has a power of the purse. And so when the Congress decides how much money to spend, they are in essence uh, putting together a fiscal policy. So let's say increase in government spending. They have to spend money on the military, spend money on science, infrastructure. That would be seen as an increase in government spending, also known as expansionary fiscal policy. So what happens when the Congress spends more money on military, science, infrastructure through expansionary fiscal policy? Government spending increases. G is going to increase. And since G and GDP are directly related, GDP will also increase. As GDP increases, AD is going to shift to the right. And now we can draw a new AD curve called AD1 and show that we are shifting AD to the right. Now, I want you to see the new equilibrium point, point B, right here. So if you are a Keynesian economist, you believe that in times of crises, you can depend on the Congress in the United States through expansionary fiscal policy, increase government spending to get ourselves out of the current situation and experience growth, experience growth 
as we can see here on the x-axis. Yes, there is a higher level of inflation, but economists would argue that as long as there is a strong central bank, it really wouldn't matter because the central bank, if it knows how to do its job, would maintain inflation at a low rate. And this is why, for Keynesian economists, uh, they believe highly in the AD curve. But if you are part of the classical economist group, you would say, no, there should not be any government intervention. Rather, leave the market alone and have the market readjust on its own. And now we can focus on the classical school of economics. And to be able to visualize this, we need to draw again our ADAS curve, where we have zero on the x-axis, we have real GDP, we're using $19.1 trillion. On the y-axis, we're using inflation price level at 1.9%. And again, we have our point A where both of these numbers meet, point A. So for many classical economists, they don't really believe much in the power of AD. They're saying, no, it's not gonna work, it's only gonna make things worse. Uh, if we see any type of intervention, let's say by the government. And the reason for that is because for many classical economists, they believe that the aggregate supply curve, AS curve, is actually going to be vertical, AS. And this is very different from the Keynesian school where we had a 45 degree angle, and now we have a straight line, a 90 degree angle of the AS curve. So in the previous example of the Keynesian school, we looked at what happens when there is an expansionary fiscal policy. Expansionary fiscal policy. And this is where we see more government spending, higher G. Well, let's see what happens. Increase in G leads to an increase in G on this side. GDP increases. AD will shift to the right. But look at what happens when we shift AD to the right. Once we draw a new AD curve, AD1, we can show that shift to the right. Look at our new equilibrium point, point B. So the entire purpose of trying to grow the economy during times of crisis made it worse because there's no growth at all it's still at $19.1 trillion, but it made the economy worse off because now we have a higher level of inflation. And this is why for economists who are part of the classical school believe that having any government intervention is not the correct way, but rather to allow markets to readjust itself over time. And that's why we have in the case of ADAS curve, both schools of economics present on the SRAS graph.